of course, yeah, there are still uh, monophonic uh, cinema, cinema halls. Um, we do output uh, uh, whatever all the all kinds of formats so that it can be played in different kinds of uh, spaces. Uh, I don't really look down on um, on single screens. You know, they are great experience because they are big big theater. Uh, and uh, of course, what you are saying is sound quality of sound reproduction quality might be bad because it is not maintained, but that is the same with uh, most of the multiplexes you know. I mean if you really look at you, you said um, sometimes um, sound that is supposed to come from left is being played on the right in home theatres and things like that. Even in cinema halls you know if you really go and measure the parameters in, in cinema halls, well known cinema halls you know, uh, there is hardly any. Uh, calibration done, you know. They do not maintain most of the uh, the uh, cinema halls, you know, or they will have their own guys, somebody, they would not even spend some uh, some money to uh, hire the Dolby guys, you know, who have the experience and, and the machine and the willingness and the, uh, uh, you know, um, and the uh, infrastructure to calibrate cinema halls for a tiny fee, you know, but none of these cinema halls respect that because they think that audience do not know anything you know and any which way you play you know who cares you know this is this has been the attitude by the cinema halls. And uh, it could be because the people are also not taking anything that they give you know so anything is gullible so why not you know this is why spend money you know that is what they think they would they would maintain that atmosphere theatre. So, we, we all go to Atmos theatre even if the film is not an Atmos uh, this thing, we know this particular screen is Atmos so it is it's maintained. So, things are things would uh, uh, would play correctly. When we were mixing Bahubali, <coughs> I want because it is going like you know 4000 under uh, about 4000 screen in India, we thought you know we will take it to many cinema halls and see during mixing. So, while mixing we will take the uh, we will take a cut a DCP and we will take it to cinema halls and play it and then it is horrendous. So, we ask the Dolby guys at our expense to come and check it you know and Dolby guys will come and check it and they will give us a report it is shocking you know many times this the entire back speakers are not working forget about back speakers sometimes the front only the center will work because that is where the dialogue is coming and the sides are not working it is like horrible you know and this is where we are judging our product you know and then when you hear things over there you think oh my god you know I mean it was a mistake to be born in this country you know seriously because this is where it is not like you cannot just keep doing things you know because things are to come back to you you know responses are to come back if there is a feedbacking mechanism you know and that is what gives you propels you to do better work. So, you do something it is like not even 40 percent is translated in, uh, to, to the screen in cinema halls and then 60 percent is lost and 60 percent is like lost in good theatres. Huh? In bad theatres not even 20 percent will be there this is the situation you know. So, you feel so demoralized you know you just think that my god you know in what shit pot am I you know. So, frustration of the highest order what do you do you know. So, we are trying we keep bringing this up we keep uh, calling the projectionist or tell the cinema hall people that you know keep the volume at least decent you know and maintain the speakers and things like that you know. But things are not changing drastically unless like uh, if, if everybody all film goes you know really um, complain or you know create a scene or you know, things like that maybe things would change you know. I went to see this um, life of pi the projectionist was strictly told every Indian film is to be played at 3 Dolby 3 when it was supposed to be at 7 you know 7 is the standard um, they are supposed to be playing and these guys have been playing it at 3, 3 is like Im unbelievable uh, un unbelievably low. So, life of pi the projectionist thought it is an Indian film. So, foreign films they are supposed to keep 6 or something like that you know because they know that foreign films levels are not going to be high. So, it, it will be fine you know. So, because this is a, they thought that it is an Indian film it was mixed modestly like foreign film meant for foreign audience. So, when it was played at 3 you cannot hear the dialogue you cannot hear the dialogue 5 minutes everybody hooted that this and all that sort after that people gave up people are watching you know. And I was just thinking I mean like you do not know what the story is you know because you cannot understand the dialogue it is so it is played so softly you know. So, 
I mean, then what do you do? This is this is our country, you know. It's not just film. It's like if we have political issues, you know. Even if like you know people are butchered or murdered, nobody, everybody, you know, just just, just some noise. After that, it all settles, you know. Nothing happens. Nothing changes, you know. So if that is the case of our, our you know, culturally, if that's how we are, then then what is sound, you know, in this whole thing, you know, what is, you know, a sound is just part of certain entertainment, you know, in a cinema hall, you know, how is that going to change? So, I think unless we are all like, uh, you know, really quality conscious and make a noise, this is not going to change. Sync sound, I would say, um, Bollywood or Indian films are generally used to um, dubbing of dialogue and uh, improving or improvising during the dub, you know. I mean, dialogue dubbing, what we call ADR, automatic dialogue replacement. <coughs> dialogue dubbing is actually an intermediate stage of technology development, you know. <coughs> and uh, all over the world, people moved on from that quickly, you know, in terms of the cinema, uh, history of cinema, if you take. You know, we used to have bulky cameras, you know, Mitchell cameras and all that sort, which could actually record sounds on location and simultaneously it will be uh, sent to an optical uh, recorder and uh, optical camera and the sound is recorded simultaneously. This is how in, in the history of cinema sound got evolved and this is how dialogue used to be recorded. And then that's, that means like you have this bulky massive Mitchell camera, you can't run around with it, it is a three phase camera, it has to be linked to mains and all that sort. And so there had to be a way to dub the uh, sound so that uh, you could, uh, you have much more flexibility during shoot, you know. So it was a technology requirement and that happened, you know, somewhere in the middle uh, of uh, history of cinema. <coughs> and then uh, when they uh, cook, when they um, devised cameras which are smaller, which can be blimped and it can be taken around and uh, sound can be recorded much in a much easier way, magnetic uh, recordings have come, so it is no more optical recording. So it is all flexible, it can all be, uh, ha all happen anywhere and uh, everywhere you plan to shoot. But somehow Indian film industry did not move ahead to that, you know, they got stuck with the uh, aspect of dubbing, they, they um, felt comfortable about that because you can improvise, you can change things and <coughs> um, you do not have the pain of controlling the noise in a noisy country, you know, in an extremely noisy country. So, it became so easy, you know, you can do anything, you can give, st give streams of commands during the shoot, you know, you do not have to worry about it, it is a much easier thing, you know, that if you are looking at comfort, if you do only a pilot sound and the dialogue is going to be replaced and nothing from location is going to be used, then it is great pleasure to shoot, because pleasure in the sense, it is so easy to shoot, you know, but what you are losing is, you do not have the performance, performance is not visual. You know, I, I do not even know where it came from that the notion that, you know, when somebody is performing, you know, if you get the picture, performance is there, you know, I mean like that is bogus, you know, you, uh, you just cannot have a, a, a video performance, you know, you have to have the dialogue delivery, you know, that is integral to that, you know, the original dialogue and even till date, you know, if you look at the pilot that has come from location, every director is struggling to get the dialogue from the mouth of the art artist during the dub and telling that match it somewhere close by, you know. I mean nowhere a replacement, you know, nowhere near, you know. And if the artist is so good, then you might get something close to what you have got on pilot, you know, and not better than that, a rare, really rare. From my experience, the first thing the directors ask is, is there any way you can clean up that thing, you know, and use, you know. And the same people who would say on location, oh, dubbing me dekh lega, you know, <coughs> to get rid of uh, the problems of, uh, you know, sound recording, the, the, not problem, the issues of sound recording, you know, the difficulty in sound recording to get, get away with that, you know, this is what the general reply is. So, I would think, uh, uh, as I said, you know, you do not have to worry about the noise, you do not, and in a star controlled uh, uh, mainstream film industry, what happens is like, you know, you have devised everything, your sound recordist and uh, cameraman, everybody has seen the location and you have decided that as per the light, as per the noise conditions, you are going to shoot at, you know, 8 in the morning, you know, and uh, 8 to 1 o'clock, 
you know let us say this is how you have planned your, your call sheet your schedule is like that and your big star who is going to come you know uh, at around the pack up time you know 12 o'clock they will just land up and you know spin the whole thing around and you have to their time is so precious so you shift the uh, timing of the shoot the schedule to till evening you know and you have decided uh, a light and a sound condition for that particular shot and that is how you have scheduled it for 8 o'clock in the morning now that is redundant you know. So, why you have uh, kept this shoot at 8 o'clock there might not be the temple uh, sound or the uh, azan sound or that or this or you know something or maybe the traffic heats up after some time and you know that is why you have chosen 8 o'clock and the cameraman has chosen the light conditions for that you know. No respect for any of these things you know it is another dynamic altogether you know. So, if you are taking the same shot in the evening you know or, or let us say 4 o'clock your, your controls are all gone you know it is an entirely different uh, <coughs> reality that you are facing. So, in this kind of situation what do you do you know. So, you, the director is forced to say that you know dubbing me dekh lega you know. So, uh, then no, no what all you are trying to do is to get the visuals of the hero you know <coughs> just grab that on camera and keep it rest we will see <coughs> you know and then you go and do the dub or whatever you know. So, this is how things work here. So, if it is a film I would say if it is a film which is not you know it till 10 years back if it is not a mainstream film people would be doing sing sound. Now, <coughs> mainstream films also understood the importance of performance and now in Bollywood everybody is doing a lot of people are doing sing sound and per se it is like if somebody approaches you for sound or anything it is understood that you know they are doing sing sound. But South India never picked the, this up you know or apart from Bombay industry nowhere else you know the general mode is sing sound that has not happened you know for them the general mode is dub. And if you are really brave then probably you would do a uh, sing sound. But luckily in Bombay we all have been propagating this, we all have been part of this and uh, I am really happy to know that <coughs> when somebody approaches you to do sound a director in his mind it is sing sound you know. So, it has become that which is like I myself did not think that this will <laughs> happen in the near future before I die I did not think this would happen, but it had happened you know. <coughs> So, it is not right to say that you know in India everyone is doing uh, this thing, but South India I mean that culture is just not there you know and various uh, reasons they show, but uh, some films people have been asking us if we can do sing sound and I have been saying that yes we can and uh, they are worried you know in terms of controlling the noises and all that sort, but it is all possible very much and coming back to Bahubali. <coughs> in Bahubali part 1 we have parked an entire sing sound crew over there I have parked a crew over there full time you know. Uh, the problem that we I had a discussion with the director and the problem we did not do sing sound is mainly because uh, the film was shot in two languages it shot in Telugu as well as Tamil and it has Telugu artists as well as Tamil artists yeah uh, not for different languages you know even in, in I mean like uh, the uh, characters some of them are Telugu speaking some of them are Tamil speaking. <coughs> so, in any case you cannot get either of the languages fully from the artist you know that was one of the reasons you know not all artists, but some of the artists. And secondly the director uh, told me that he is going to use blowers in very many shots because exterior shot wind hair blowing it is going to be there you know. So, if it is a sing sound film you can probably normal film you can probably device it in such a way that the blower you know a silent blower or so called silent blower or keeping it a little away or covering it with something and all that sort you know you can manage you know because all you are looking at is a signal to noise ratio the noise should be a little down or considerably down. So, that it does not interfere with the legibility of the dialogue yeah, <coughs> but in a period film where it is supposed to be 1000 years back year ba years back. Uh, you cannot have electric sound at all you cannot even have an electric hum you know and you cannot have anything to do with electricity you know motors or nothing you know. So, what do you do even if you control this uh, uh, blower sound to an extent and all that sort it is going to be there you know it is not about legibility anymore it is about not having or having you know. So, and thousands of people in the set you know 
like various extras, various machines are working, carpenters, massive sets, you know, you have never seen that kind of sets, you know. And that, that uh, court is an entirely big set, one of the biggest floors in the country uh, or in Asia and uh, that is where it has been set up, you know. So, 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 so hundreds of people are working, there could be, you know, when you say that or oh, shift this or do that or do this, you know, carpenters are working that, this and various gadgets are around, it was literally impossible to get modern sounds of the <coughs> mic, you know, just the modern sounds. So, it would I knew that it is going to be impossible, but still I did not want to miss out on massive reactions and uh, uh, so many people acting, you know, a crowd etcetera. So, um, extras, you know. So, I parked the uh, group, uh, the uh, team over there, so that something or the other, I mean whatever we can and we pretended, I told the director that if it is a sync sound, there would be discipline you know the the crew would be silenced it would be such fun for performers to perform you know it would be ideal and when you have a si when you have silence in the set it's such fun you know you know that you know you are going to get what you want you know it feels like serious thing happening you know like serious cinema happening over there and uh, <coughs> things things happen very fast you know so we generally told everybody that because the crew is also there that it's going to be we are recording Know, so, every shot was we were recording. So, with as much sound control as possible, so that something or the other can be used, some effects or the other can be used in terms of dialogue, some uh, some reactions if there are like hundreds of people reacting to things, you know all that can be picked up, you know and the noise might not be heard kind of thing. So, I have, I have done all that and even on location we have taken a full crew and uh, attempted to uh, record. We have recorded everything to how much of it is being used and not was the question that you know we have not used much. Uh, some effects we have used, some reactions we have used, some dialogues uh, like in part wa part 2 <coughs> one of the sequences director badly wants to use the sync sound because the uh, artist was just not able to give it you know. So, we used the, uh, the sync sound by cleaning it up you know. So, that kind of thing has happened. So, uh, it was purely we were unable to <coughs> use it because of these issues otherwise it is not that you know we were disrespecting the aspect or anything like that. I am fully for sync sound you know <coughs> I have been propagating that uh, you know ever since I got into this industry. So, <coughs> yeah, it is not a it is not any disrespect towards it. We know that this is the only way to go get performance as it is you know <coughs> there is absolutely no doubt about that. The replacement is far from original and far from what you can, what you have already achieved during the shoot. Film like Bahubali, I mean challenges are uh, inevitable <laughs> and that is the fun and of course, yeah, it, it has been really, it has been a massive, uh, you know, work and uh, exceptionally challenging job, no doubt, uh, mainly to scale up know scaling up of things you know to extraordinary uh, size is uh, is quite something and uh, the film had uh, tons of CG computer graphics and uh, that uh, spun us around because uh, it is so unpredictable anything is possible on screen now because um, it is no more live action. So, what you what the camera cannot cover it is it is done in CG and when you are working with CG excess CG. Um, you do not get to see the full picture when you are designing because that comes much later and you know they keep updating, but then you never get to see it is the full fledged thing till the mix almost you know till the last day of the design you know. So, you have to imagine you have to guess and uh, prepare yourself to do that to do sound thinking that it might be this director says you know it will be eventually like this you know it is not going to be like what you see it will be you know changed to that or this and all that sort. So, accordingly we are like uh, you know in our imagination we multiply things you know and uh, get prepared for that and uh, get ready for that and start designing things for that. Then extensive discussion, yes of course, part 1 we had a lot of discussion with the director <coughs> and uh, what we do is we, we ask for a sequence and then we do sound and then we show it, we take it to Hyderabad in a mixing room we show it and then they comment and then we bring it back you know kind of thing. But most of the time I would say 
it was uh, uh, you know what we we were pretty much in tune and in the same wavelength at a very early stage itself you know so it was fun working you know there was no clash or conflicts or things like that but preparation for a film yeah preparation for a film of this size we have explored anything and everything that's possible i have wandered around and recorded uh, you know anything that i found interesting for the film for instance waterfall you know it starts with waterfall part 1 and we had access they had uh, uh, rigged the whole uh, waterfall uh, spaces in in kerala atirappalli uh, waterfall and there have been ropes and cranes and everything you can just go to the mouth of the waterfall on uh, you know, where the splashes are happening anywhere which normally common man as a common man i have been the very many times even recording but i could never access i could never go that close except before a long time back you know you were allowed a, a little closer i would say so uh, our, during the shoot we went and we had all these facilities you just name you just say i want to be there you know to record sound you are there you are taken over there you know extremely difficult climbing uh, you know quite like bahubali the way he is climbing you know it was like shivdu how the how he is climbing like that we had to climb with the help of ropes and all that sort with the long boom rods and microphones i have recorded extensively around you know after in in the waterfall and around and then mountain streams forest gushing waterfalls or i mean water streams uh, uh, forest streams all that i have recorded whatever i could and then when we are designing we realize that you know it's inadequate because the size of the waterfall is getting multiplied and multiplied i went to jog falls in karnataka it's a biggest waterfall in india and extensively recorded uh, sound over there many days spending and that sound is also used and then i we realize it's still not it's like when we, when you see the final visual it's in many folds of niagara you know so so it's like what do you do you know <laughs> so i have used any sound that i could get i have recorded long time back i have recorded uh, uh, in in canada in buffalo uh, canadian side of the niagara which is where you can access the niagara way closer and i used rumble of that you know the bass rumble of niagara for this waterfall you know and uh, rest were multiplied and you know, multi layered various uh, um real waterfalls then various gushing of you know water out of a dam you know out of the sluis walls of dams and uh, uh, sea waves you know like uh, during monsoon crashing sea waves all that is been used uh, extensively to create a waterfall you know and like that uh, uh, i have uh, i have gone to, to quietest of places forest streams you know or um, in canoes and uh, uh, you know because you need to pick up sound where there is no traffic is there so uh, avoiding traffic and recording things was quite tough you know and then various forests to record sounds of forests sounds of birds sounds of uh, uh, people <coughs> people human beings shouting in the forest you know all that sort because the reverberation in a forest you know is incredibly beautiful you know it's it's so good so instead of processing it with uh, uh, with plugins you know certain things i have actually recreated in the forest itself you know horses we have taken horses in the forest and made them you know made, made somebody ride a horse in the forest so that you hear these things you know with reflect multiple reflections and then enhance that and support that Uh, around you know um yeah and uh, most of the sounds that uh, uh, we have supplemented with sound effects from library our own library uh, what we have recorded and then stock library that we bought but most of the sounds uh, most of the solid sounds the important sounds are recorded uh, Uh, you know live wherever we needed to and then foley recordings you know special sound effects were created uh, for part 1 we have created that in belgium with a very a good foley artist who can who is who has craft so i sit with him i have been working with him for many many films so you know i get it out of him like you know the way we want um in, in the way we use in indian films because uh, the way they give is uh, more for european films and uh, which is different here we want upfront sounds you know so <clears throat> and this for part 2 we uh, we didn't go abroad to do uh, foley sounds because uh, there was i realized uh, when you were when i was doing part 1 i realized um properties are very important you know and uh, in europe getting the properties that we are used to in india are dif difficult 
um, what is used in the film. So I thought it's better to get a guy from there to Ramoji Film City Foley Room, and because we have uh, we have loads of properties that, that are collected and kept in the film city, you know, by, by Bahubali team, and also Ramoji Film City has massive collection of properties. So everything can be used to create sound. If I call a sound, uh, if I call a, a Foley guy from abroad. So we somehow managed with the Foley room of Ramoji Film City. Uh, we, you know, we read and uh, re, I mean, uh, arranged things over there and uh, uh, recorded over there. I think um, <coughs> in if you look at the history of uh, um, technology development, you know, we might have restrictions in number of tracks. For instance, you know, if you say um, the masters when they were making films, even in India, you know, Satyatri and people like that, and directors like that. If you look at uh, the technical technology that was prevailing at that particular point of time, you might not have n number of tracks, you know, you might not be able to do a non-linear edit or non-linear sound edit or things like that. But I do not think uh, any of that ever made a difference or a compromise in the output, you know, be it camera, be it sound, be it uh, um, uh, Steenbeck or even Moviola or anything, you know. He, people have worked so hard, you know, because as per the machine, you know, like uh, if the machine has restrictions, you worked around that, you worked harder to get what you wanted to do, you know. What you wanted to do has been kept high at a place and you achieved irrespective. I would say olden days, people have worked much harder and with the available technology, they have produced results which are stunning, which are way better than what we do today, you know. Be it cinema, be it carpentry, be it building construction, be it designs, anything you take, you know. Which carpenter can provide to, he has the patience to carve things that we see, we used to see furnitures, you know, about a hundred years back, you know. Is that possible in these days? You want assistance of machine. And when you get assistance of machine, you know, to do something that you have done with hand, you know, it does not look the same, you know, it just, it is repetitive, you know that its characters are similar, they are not unique, they are not different, you know. So, even in a cinema, it has been like that, you know, you look at like you, like even this interview, you can keep rolling uh, the camera because you do not have footage limitation, yeah. If it was a 16 mm uh, camera, you are going to think before you ask questions. And I am going to uh, think before I answer, you know, it will, it is going to be like just what is needed, you know. So, instead of you selecting at the edit editing room, you know, because you can do that, you do not care about the footage, length of the footage, you know. Those days, you while, while I, when I reply, I am being careful. When you ask questions, you are being careful. So, editing happens at the shoot, you know, and you come prepared. Here you can fire questions any which way that you want because you have enough footage, you know. You go for a retake or you go, you no retake, you just roll, you know, this is how it is. So, so nothing has really crippled, you know, on in those days just because, you know, technology is, we look at, look back and say technology was poor or not as sophisticated, you know. We can do that in history, now we can say that. But at that particular point, it was the most, uh, most incredible technology that they had. So, now we think that you know what we have is the best you know, but after a few years somebody is going to look down upon this and say that oh these guys have struggled so much kind of thing. But in terms of quality like let us say valve radios you know that sound quality I still crave for that you know. I still crave for that, that sound quality so I cannot say that um, things have improved. Of course, things have improved in a way where your radios are much smaller now you know, tiny pieces. Earlier it used to be a big box, you know, true. But at the, at the expense of quality, when we got into digital, digital means it only made the maneuverability, but it, it only improved the maneuverability and it only improved ab able to control the noise and edit it any which way that you want and maybe 
more number of tracks and a lot of processing which we did other otherwise uh, like if we were uh, processing uh, reverb processing if you are using we had echo chambers before so we would send a signal to a chamber which is a physical echo cave you know and it creates echo you know and you can or reverberation you can control that so we have achieved uh, and that gives really good quality so we have achieved things in other ways you know it's just that it's made convenient for us to do like at the press, press of a button you can or con controlling three knobs you can get uh, uh, control over reverberation and things like that you know but in terms of sound quality from analog to digital i don't think sound quality has improved at all you know because analog sound had the pristine uh, uh, fidelity and in digital you are just sampling it you know sampling is always an approximation Appro approximation to the real sound you know to the analog sound always you know you can get it better and better you increase the sampling frequency and you know uh, you try to reach it closer and closer and closer but you are not achieving the analog quality you know that is why we still you know in this era it is all going back to valve amplifiers and uh, uh, analog recorders and all that sort because you know that you just play you just play a vinyl record you know and you hear that through an analog amplifier you know the difference it reminds you that 30 years back the technology was there or 50 years back what was there we have deviated from that we have gotten used to digital sound you know which is far from uh, analog sound when you hear that sound you know oh my god wow this is what it, uh, it used to be you know we have forgotten all that you know so when you are asking about um, how this technology is how things have changed because things have made to be so easy easier to use uh, anybody can do this now you know almost so you so people are thinking that you it's okay you don't have to put that much labor in doing things you know how we all live in the internet era and in the mobile application era everything is done by the machine so everything is done by softwares that are written by few bright people you know so you are, I don't know if we are using much of our brain anyway <laughs> in do, to do anything. So eventually we are all going to be crippled with so many things because uh, machines would do you know mobiles would do applications would do most of the job you know and uh, we have plugins to do sound you know a lot of uh, processings are done by plugins. So um, systematically you are going to become uh, you know uh, less craft oriented and more equipment oriented you know and because machines you will ask the machine to do you know but to get something I mean in whatever era you know uh, to get something interesting it is always the human mind which is going to drive the technology to uh, or use the technology in, in a way that we find uh, the best you know so it is uh, always going to be like if you want it in certain ways the person is going to do that you know in general of course things might not be happening people might not be putting in a lot of labor or budgets are getting cut so when budgets when you cut down the budget you know and when particularly sound budget is like pathetic across the board you know in in our country sound budget for films is like ridiculous you know so when that happened then when that keeps happening not too many people who are bright could would want to do this and the teamwork itself would suffer because people are not getting money you know so they can't put too much time into it so they would do they would try to do a quick fix you know somehow because for the money that they are getting they can't survive you know so unless somebody is like so passionate about it and you know keep working on that irrespective of the money that you get you know uh, that's how we do you know many many films we do with no budget or very low budget and they are the they are most interesting work for us you know often when we get a lot of money you know somehow that work might not even demand uh, so, so much uh, of uh, uh, effort you know I mean this is how it goes. Um, so I suppose uh, it is all the if you think that you know the, uh, the quality is not up to the mark it is uh, due to these factors rather than any fundamental uh, reason uh, towards uh, uh, the approach uh, um, uh, or approach towards work. I think uh, if I think the best that can happen to a uh, let us say a location sound recordist is that you know if he knows that the director is with him. If the director is with him a sync sound recording person a sync sound recordist can actually get anything that you want 
you know if you know that the director is with you which means that the crew is with you you know which means that the production is with you you know however tough a situation is you can create wonders you know but when you know that the director is not with you then the crew is not with you then the production is not with you then you become the enemy of the crew because nobody wants you, nobody likes when you say shut up you know don't make sound don't create uh, this thing be disciplined and in our country discipline is the last of the thing in any case you know so nobody likes if somebody disciplines and people uh, actually i mean everywhere else you there is no need for somebody to discipline the other you know socially culturally people would dis be disciplined by themselves you know when you when when you know that it's a coordinated exercise there are so many people and it's entirely coordinated so if you and you are a, a vital component in that and if you are not disciplined by yourself you know this, this is not going to function in our country it's not like that it's like somebody has to you know with a stick somebody has to discipline everybody and that becomes the sound man because he needs silence you know so so if uh, if your team is not with you what are you going to do you know so i, I would think that you know if the director is with you and uh, if the director can involve you at the uh, at the scripting stage itself as a sound designer you can really discuss a lot of things and overall colorations to a scheme of things for sound can be worked out you know if you are involved at the scripting stage itself or pre production stage itself however <coughs> for a sound designer you know what comes before a shot and what comes after the shot is so crucial so effectively for me the design is going to be progressing or it's going to be firming up when i have a locked picture because whatever your script is ultimately in the editing table everything changes it's a different dynamics you know nobody looks back at the script and say oh you know this shot is supposed to come after that shot you know it's all it's an entirely different ball game now it's you know it's like you are writing something and then you are filming you know everything has changed everything has gone to another domain you know like that then once you edit it you know our entire design aspect that we are talking about during pre production or during production is changed you know so when you lock the film that's when we step into the um, main uh, design work and uh, uh that inspires us and that propel us to gather sounds to grab sounds and to use it any which way you know so this is a reality for us so a lot of preparatory stuff that we do during production and pre production will only help in terms of sourcing you know because things are things have changed and it's a new dynamic uh by the end of the edit you know to the upcoming uh, sound designers and sound recordists i would think that i mean like unless you are passionate you know you are really passionate you are not going to reach anywhere because it's a it's a field where you can just cover yourself up with some muck and nobody probably would notice or you might think that nobody not everybody not many people have noticed but um, if you want to create something interesting it's a very labor intensive uh, field and if you really put your mind to it you can create wonders you know and it's hard work no doubt but it pays off you know uh, it's very rewarding when you see your film on screen and when people call and say that you know it's been wonderful and they have paid attention they have paid attention to the detailed sound work often sound work is not something that you flash around many times we are hiding behind you know our purpose is our purpose is to <coughs> make people glued to the story you know so when we are designing sound the moment you overdo it you know or the moment you say that oh i am here i am you know this is my sound if you have that kind of intention people might be taken out of the story which you don't want the whole idea is to 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 pin them down to the story you know by creating sounds from wherever and you know so i don't use sound in a way where you know it's gimmicky it comes from here and there and all that sort you know which it takes you out of the you're just turning around and oh my god what was that you know so i don't do that kind of thing you know i would say that um many times audience wouldn't even know what is music and what is sound you know it's all intermingled and uh, 
uh, intertwined and uh, you can't really figure out and and the purpose of uh, our uh, craft is not to uh, not for audience to say that oh this is his this is that you know and then he's done a good job it doesn't work like that you know for us we sincerely do our work and as a film if things stand up and hold that's the success so which means letting a lot of thing things go you know letting your ego go letting your pride go often because you have done some sound and many people would think that the music director has done that you know to me it doesn't matter you know i have contributed to the film you know i know that it's i have done that you know i have that satisfaction that's all it doesn't matter uh, what people or, or what somebody else thinks you know who who has done this or all as a team we have created something for the film you know that's what stands so passion you know my advice is like be passionate and be very hard working you know it's a uh, it's a lot often we work like 15 20 hours a day you know for many many days for many months you know so be prepared for that